In this episode of In the Trenches with Dave Lapham, brought to you by First Star Logistics, we get to visit with special assistant and very special assistant on the defensive side of the football, Mark Duffner. He has been a great player at William & Mary. Uh, he coached at Ohio State with Woody Hayes. <laughs> He's coached head coach at Holy Cross and at University of Maryland. He's been with the Cincinnati Bengals and quite a few other NFL teams for 25 years and finally getting to the Super Bowl. Mark Dufter is happy about this football season, and I know, I do know for sure, you're going to like what he has to say about this year. Welcome once again to In the Trenches with Dave Lapham, brought to you by First Star Logistics. And we have got a very, very special guest today. Probably as close a friend as I have in football. This guy is an outstanding football coach. But believe me when I say, even better human being. And that's hard to say because he is such an outstanding football coach. But Mark Dufter is good people. Let's, let's put it that way. Coach, welcome to the show. Well, thanks, Dave. I appreciate it. It's uh, quite an honor to be to be with you today. I appreciate it. So, Coach, let's talk about if, if anybody was born to be a football player and a football coach, the good Lord blessed Mark Duffner with those talents and abilities, the way he can relate to people in, in, this, in this particular sport. Uh, you play at Annadale in Virginia, a, a very, very like Moeller High School of Cincinnati. I mean, it was that kind of football program. And you get get recruited to William and Mary. Um, you get recruited by Bobby Ross, and your your head football coach is Marv Levy. What no, no. about that? No, no, no. Actually, my head football coach was Lou Holtz. Lou Holtz. Yeah, it was Lou Holtz. It was uh, wow. Coach Levy had left uh, prior to that, just not that much right? before that. And yeah, and so it was it was Bobby Ross that recruited me, and then Lou Holtz wound up being the the head coach. So, but, but but Marv Levy was at William and Mary, and he was replaced by Lou Holtz, That's and correct. recruited by Bobby Ross. Yeah, what the heck, William and Mary, man, that, yeah. they had it going on. Well, we we know you know it's as a sidebar, we've got quite a few coaches in the NFL. Uh, I mean, in terms of William and Mary people, you know, with Mike Tomlin, Sean McDermott. Yeah. I mean, I could go on. There's probably a dozen guys in the league right now that have some William and Mary background. So, you uh, you end up obviously getting a real good um, foundation for the game of football, high school and your college playing career. Then you go on to uh, one of your stops is at Holy Cross where from 85 to uh, 80, is it 85 or 86 to 91? 86 to 91. 86 to 91. You go 60 wins, five losses, one tie. What? What's up with that coach? Well, you got to remember Holy Cross is a Jesuit school. So we had quite a few of the, you know, that there's some divine intervention that assisted us in that. That's no question about that. But outstanding staff and players allowed that to happen. Sixty wins, five losses, coach. That's that's amongst you know the greatest winning percentage I've ever heard of at the collegiate level. Well, that's that's well, crazy. Yeah, yeah. Again, I appreciate your kindness and so forth. But the, like I said, we had some outstanding coaches and players that uh, all contributed. It was a, certainly a we effort. That's for sure. So you go to Maryland, you install the run and shoot offensively. Was that because of the difficulty that it had given you as a defensive coach, or what was the? Philosophy? Well, Dave, we, we we that was what we ran at Holy Cross. We right. actually kind of morphed into it a little bit because we'd had some personnel when I became the head coach there. Some we'd been an I two back team, and we had some players graduate of really good cal- ta- caliber. Yeah, but to fit the current players we had at that time, we kind of went into a more uh, run and shoot style of offense and it was uh not not a not uh you know what i want to use a, a thoroughbred offense as far as that's concerned we tweaked it quite a bit but with a lot of stuff that had given us trouble over the years and so uh, we brought that style of offense to maryland and and those players there really picked it up quickly offensively in that first season they broke every offensive record that maryland had had with some darn good quarterbacks in their history so we uh it, it, it worked well for us for a while there. There's no doubt about that. But I, I, I'm leaving out an important step here because your first exposure 
as a, as a college head coach is you go to Ohio State yeah. and, and work on the staff with the legendary Woody Hayes. And I know, I, I've heard you talk about what an impact Woody Hayes had on your life. Tell us about that a little bit, Coach. Well, that was the greatest uh, opportunity that, that anybody could have it was to have an opportunity to work with Coach Hayes. And a man that, uh, I mean, I just, I, many times while I was there for the two years, I had to pinch myself and say, are you kidding me? I mean, I, and I'm sitting there and there's Coach Hayes and I'm with this staff and everything. I mean, I, uh, I'm, I had such a great fortune to be around him. And he, he I've never been an, around anybody that had more energy, that had better recall. His memory was photographic. Uh, his work ethic, nobody could outwork him. Uh, very, very uh, analytical in terms of offense, defense, everything. I mean, he was a... Uh, historian, especially military historian of worldwide uh, renown, if you will. I mean, just an incredible person and one that uh, was a great giver to people. He did so many things for people. People don't know about it. It was incredible. So, Coach, I mean, exposure, Woody Hayes and the great college coaches that you were exposed to, you know, as a player. I mean, you, you, had, a, you had a foundation that was built by – uh, a, a lot of good construction uh, workers there, you know, and architects. I mean, they they really helped you in your young years, didn't they? No, there's no question about it. And, and then, you know, then I get the tremendous opportunity to come to the Bengals. Yeah. And I come here and I get an opportunity to learn from this, that, you know, this organization under uh, Mike Brown as the owner and, and all the personnel people that were here and then Pete Brown and, and then uh, to learn under Coach Coslett, the, off, the head coach at that time, and then I'm with the great Dick LeBeau. I mean, and, and you know, you at that time and currently still one of the greatest defensive coaches this game's ever had. Sure. So I've been very, very fortunate to be around the best there are, both as people and as coaches. And how many years in the National Football League now, Coach? 20 what? 25. This is my 25th year. and. Uh, Still for uh, anniversary. So. Yeah, yeah, it's a, yeah, yeah. It's been very. It's, I've been so fortunate, so, so blessed that I'm uh, very, very grateful for all that I've had the opportunity to experience. You know, whether it be in the collegiate ranks or the professional ranks. Coach, you're you're a, you are a true ball coach. There's no doubt about it. So the silver anniversary, Coach Nuff, Nuffner is going with the franchise to Super Bowl Fifty Six, and the silver anniversary of his uh, basically of his of his professional coaching tenure that's apropos i think what about this football team coach i mean what, what, what do you like best about this group of guys you know i uh, dave there's a lot i like about them i could i probably could speak for a few weeks on that but the, i really like the character and the attitude of this bunch these guys first and foremost are a highly competitive group uh they're a very resilient group uh, they you know, they don't, uh, they have a short memory if there's a problem, they kind of can, they just keep competing, but uh, they are just a, a, a great group to work with because they're so hardworking. They've got genuine care for one another. I mean, it, I've been around some darn good teams. I don't think I've been around any that has a better personality and character, if you will. And I guess the word attitude would fill it, fit into that in this group. They are really fun to be around. And, and every one of them, there's, they're all, very special in the people that they are. They're talented. We've got, you know, the talent certainly has gotten better. Personnel, coaching staff's done a great job of that. But coupled with that, and probably more importantly, is the real makeup of these young men. And, and they are a terrific group. I know that you work some with uh, the H boys, Hendrickson and Hubbard. Yeah, that's and, the law uh, firm, local law firm here now. The local law firm. There you go. And and they they've combined for 27 sacks. I mean, in the regular season, the playoffs. Now that's 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 quite a tandem. They they empty the effort bucket. I mean, it, it it's unbelievable how hard those guys play. And and the role that Sam Hubbard played in the second half against the Chiefs, where he showed that position versatility, the athletic versatility to uh to to almost a Swiss army knife, you know, on the edge at linebacker, you know, here, there, everywhere. So beware, you know, it was like, where's Waldo? No, no, no. Where's Hubbard? I mean, that, that was unbelievable in the second half, wasn't it? Oh, it was, it was. And, that, and that's a great tribute and credit to him. He, he has such a, uh, a love for football, such a competitive spirit about him and he prepares so well. Uh, none of that surprised me and, and or anybody else here. I mean, and again, he gives you such versatility. He, and that's because uh, not only because he's got some talent, but because he's going to he's going to give you every bit he's got. Whatever it takes, he's going to give. 
and uh, you, as you just said, I mean, he makes a, he makes two sacks back to back. One of them where he's involved in just rush, and the other one where he, he had a little spy type technique. Right. And read it properly, and then went through and got a, as probably as escapable a quarterback as there is in the league. Uh, two back-to-back sacks. I mean, just played terrifically, and and really all they they all did. Uh, but that that was also a two special plays for sure. Quick question on that: when he was spying Mahomes, and then he and then he ended up coming at him and and just corralling a guy like you said that can make you miss and and drive you crazy trying to chase him. Yeah, was, was that? Was that in his in his head? Was he just had a count in his head when he was going to come? What triggered him to come when he came and, and be as effective as he was in so doing? Well, he I think he just was continuing to read the mannerisms of the quarterback. He's there as a as kind of a, a middle hole player, if you will. And then uh, if the quarterback would break contain or start to scramble, then he would be a guy that could second contain the quarterback. And and I think what you said probably is right. He had a, in his mind at about this point things were going to start to happen. And he took a, he took a beeline to the guy that was, and, and again, to corral that guy really in the open field was a terrific effort and play. You guys have had experience doing that with the greatest in the NFL, in my opinion, Lamar Jackson, Oof. and the way you've mush rushed him and not had defensive linemen rush past him and don't get greedy for sacks, you know, stay in your lane. Don't try to, you know, do anything to, to get greedy. But that that experience, I would think, Coach, that you know, having that in your in your back pocket, because uh, when you rushed even three, you guys did a great job of of mush rushing, you know, Mahomes and and keep controlling him and keeping him in the pocket. Yeah, well, Coach Hobby, I think, has done a terrific job with the front uh, defensive line. I mean, uh, they have really they have an excellent uh, uh, understanding of protection, uh, under, understanding of duck alleys the quarterback could go through and. And as you mentioned, rush lanes and so forth, and he's done a magnificent job with these guys. And and so it's not by accident that they've been able to perform like that. And then I, I think, too, the coaching staff, especially on defense at halftime, really did some things in an adjustment area. And they had in both of the Kansas City games to once we had a good feeling on what Kansas City's game plan was going to be, took took the, the adjustment plan and implemented it at halftime. And then the players to their credit, were able to adjust a little bit with some of the things we were doing and play like we did in both of those halves. So uh, there's a collective uh, effort and uh, response that everybody put forth to allow us to play like we did. Yeah, and it's, it's always a combination, you know, front end and back end. And on the back end, you know, when you're rushing three and four, you had seven in coverage and uh, you would give Mahomes one thing pre-snap and then he'd try to confirm it post-snap. It's like, ah, it's not what I thought it was going to be. Now all of a sudden he's, well, he's holding on to the football and it's like he doesn't want to make a mistake that's going to cost his team the game. And he's like, you know, what do I do? What do I do? You, you guys had him flummoxed. I mean, he was buffaloed. He, he really didn't know what he was looking at. It was, it was unbelievable. Well, that was, again, tribute to the staff and the players alike. Uh, and, and he's, for a younger quarterback, he's pretty savvy at being able to key and read. So, uh, you know, we're, we were kind of pleased that there was some indecision uh, – created uh, by the defense for the quarterback. And then it was resulted in, you know, we we're always talking about trying to get the ball off people. We had two takeaways in the second half and uh, very key ones that we had to have. And uh, obviously that helped us to have the win. You, you talk about uh, takeaways, coach, in the playoffs, uh, six interceptions by six different players. In my mind, in three football games, to have six interceptions by six different people, that's saying something. Yeah, I mean, you're getting contributions from a lot of people and maybe some unexpected, you know, who would have thought B.J. Hill would tip yeah. themselves, you know. I mean, you, you get plays like that. But that that's pretty – against the toughest opponent, you know, you, you're getting six guys to secure – take a – steal a possession away from the opponent. That's a big deal. Well, again, I think that's – there's clear evidence there of, of great coaching by the staff and great buy-in by the players to have that kind of participation, as you mentioned it. You know, Coach Hobby does a little tip drill, much like exactly happened where B.J. caught that thing. So it's not like it was a surprise. And, you know, B.J. Hill had a heck of a game, uh, both run-wise and rush-wise in, in that game. And he's been a great addition to the to the defensive line and to our defense and to our team. And uh, he's a darn good athlete. I mean, that, he's got good hands. I mean, that rascal could, you know, we, I, I, I told him, I said, my God, we might put you out and loan, loan some polecat and throw to you, you know, but he's a, no, he it's 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 great that there's that kind of playmaking. And again, 
the players have uh, heard the, the sound, if you will, in terms of takeaways and, and responded to it. That's, again, the, the number one uh, stat, if you will, to victory. And so far, we've been able to hold on to it. When you look at it, Coach, the Chiefs are 11-2 and in their last 13 games. The only two losses, both in the month of January, to the Bengals. 11-0 and against everybody else. That, that, that's, that's pretty – Pretty unbelievable. So you, we talked about the adjustments you made defensively against the Chiefs. Let's go back to the other two playoff games. The uh, Raiders and the Titans, a combined 34 points. You gave up 17 and a half points a game on an average basis in the playoffs. I mean, I remember back in the day when offenses weren't as explosive as now. We thought if our defense can hold uh, opponent to 17 points or less, we're going to win football games. This is back in the 70s and 80s. Now – you guys are holding teams to 17 and a half points in the playoffs. That's a hell of a deal, coach. Well, I think there's a, that's again, that's a, a collective uh, effort. The offense, sometimes the best defense you have is a ball control offense or a scoring offense. And our offense has been able to perform in both of those two areas. And that coupled with a, hopefully a, a, a stingy defense run and pass. And uh, then you might come up with that outcome. So, uh, it's been a team effort all the way in, in special teams to boot. I mean, you, you know, Money Mac and what he's done and what, what the return game's done and all, all parts of that. I mean, it's, it's not a one or one part or one man show by any stretch. And that's another beautiful thing about this team. They're all, uh, no, no matter what the role or what the unit is, they're all uh, anxious and, and unselfish in their uh, desire to contribute. What does – a quarterback like Joe Burrow, who basically approaches the quarterback position like a linebacker, you know, yeah. he, he wants to, he likes physical uh, part of football. He doesn't mind getting hit. You know, I mean, he doesn't flinch. I've seen quarterbacks get hit a couple of times and sack themselves. They'll go to the turf where they get touched. This guy, this guy that's, not, that's not in his DNA. Not even close. I mean, this guy, I, you know, I prefer to him as a middle linebacker. Sometimes, in fact, I even, I go up to him after game and said, flip. you know, I mean, you had about 18 tackles today if you were playing for us. And on that side, you know, and he is, is I mean, he is terrific. And, and I love his competitive spirit. You know, I mean, in fact, he, you know, he played some defense in high school. And and uh, I think at, at one point he was he was pretty close to being on the kickoff team when he wasn't playing up at Ohio State at one point. But the, I know the coaches kind of shut that down. But he, he is, he, he is, uh, I just, uh, I think the world of him and what he's brought to this team and to this organization and to the to sport of football. I mean, he's a highly competitive, very cool. And when I say cool, he can handle every situation. He's even keeled. He, he doesn't get uh, rattled. Uh, he's got great leadership skills. And that coupled with his ability to play quarterback have made him a very special guy. And thank God that, that he's wearing the stripes because uh, uh, I, I just, we have great regard for him. Coach, you mentioned the term leader. And uh, I, I know when you guys were putting together this football team as a coaching staff with the scouting department and everything that's involved with it in terms of signing free agents, utilizing the draft, a trade with B.J. Hill, Billy Price, B.J. Hill trade turned out great. All, all of those things. The common thread was everybody loved football and everybody was either a captain in high school or college. or So you had a bunch of leaders. And Good teams that I played on, it wasn't just a guy that led the offense or defense. There were multiple leaders at every position group, you know, and it was like everybody would would feed off of a bunch of guys, not just a guy or a couple of guys. Is that what's going on here? Absolutely. And again, that you, you said something that's accurate. The, the personnel staff, Duke Tobin and his staff, all those guys, uh, Mike Potts, all of them, they've done a terrific job in terms of not just the athletic evaluation the coaching staff here is is more involved really in that also than any other pro team that i've been around and that i know of and so it's a collective effort but it's been a very good effort in terms of not only play select player selection ability wise but also as you mentioned the character uh the leadership the backgrounds of these guys and you know there's sometimes there's a scotia luck involved with that i mean you you, you know but they've hit on on so many of either free agents that have been added to the team or the draft picks, and and there's there's clear evidence as to why this team is where it is right now. It's a talented team, but it is a uh, very strong character 
and personality driven team. And there are many people that are contributing. I, you know, you're all, so I don't know if you can ever have enough leaders. Uh, you know, sometimes that's always a void. Geez, we wish we had this guy or that guy to lead. Well, uh, you know, and, and some of these guys came in. Some of them, I mean, Joe Burrow was a young man. He assumed a leadership role right away when he walked in here. Right. So it's not an age related uh, uh, goal, goal, if you will, or, or position. It's one that people have and some, and it can be in fact developed. And we, we've got the right now the right examples to bring along others to become instrumental in leadership. Coach, at what point is there a game or a point in the season where you thought, geez, we might be pretty good. I mean, we, we might have something cooking here. We may be special. Was there anything? Well, I, I think that even the, the very first game against Minnesota, I mean, we yep. knew that that was a, a darn good football team and yep. it was going to take us, you know, we, we know pretty quickly how good we were, how we stacked up against them. And so I felt uh, after we got that one, you know, you, you say, well, shoot, I think we can be pretty good. And, and there was a number of spots that had to continue to develop, but you saw very quickly the the development of a guy, say, like Logan Wilson, who, who was very, very active early in the season has been, continued to be in. We hadn't lost him for a little bit with his shoulder. Uh, who knows what else he could have done. But, I mean, there was uh, – that game, I think, started it off. And then I, I just felt – I think we, we felt all the way through that uh, the ones that we didn't have was more on us, not to, to take disrespect to the opponent, but we didn't uh, get enough takeaways or we didn't tackle as well or, or whatever the case may be. And – and that those were fixable uh, things, uh, considerations. So uh, we had we had good feeling about. And the, and the, the other thing that I felt was, even even in loss, there was a, a real sense of uh, ownership and also determination from the team uh, as to, okay, we got to fix this, whatever the case may be. There was not a finger point or a or a who cares or any, there was none of that. And. Thank the Lord they've continued that way, and that's why this team has been able to play as well as they have on the road. Yeah, this is, I mean, this team has come back. You know, we've had some first halves that we'd like to probably say we could do a lot better in it, but they've these games going, they know they're 60-minute games. And you learn how to win, and I think this team early on started to learn how to win and now understand that better than earlier in the year. So we're going to bank on that as we continue to move forward. So – Defensively, you had 42 sacks during the regular season, tied for ninth in the NFL. You have eight sacks in the postseason in uh, three football games. You have six interceptions. You know, those are those are big. Those are pressure-related a lot of times, too. You're playing the Rams in the Super Bowl, and uh, they got a quarterback that can make every throw. I mean, the kid's got as good arm talent as anybody I've ever seen. And uh, and the, he's got he's got some weapons. I mean, Cooper Cup is, is yeah. ridiculous and OBJ. You earn the right, like you all have said as coaches many times, you earn the right to rush the passer, you know, with third, put him in third and long situations. Is that going to be the key to the football game, making him throw it when he uh, has to instead of when he wants to? Absolutely. I think that's always what it is. You know, you want to you want to make them kind of get out of their comfort zone, not have uh, their way with the chalk, if you will, and, and, and play selection. So. Absolutely. And as you mentioned, uh, son of a gun, he, Stafford's got, he, he can make every throw. He's got good enough escape ability. He's tough. Uh, I mean, I've, uh, some throws he's made up, you know, you just go, you got to be kidding me. And, <laughs> and then, you know, when you look at Cup's uh, production, and, and uh, I mean, he will not go out of bounds. That rascal is trying to score every time he gets the ball. Beckham is a superb talent. I mean, they, their tight end has had a a terrific year for him. Higby was a little bit ouchy right now, health wise. Right. Their running backs are good. Their line is good. I mean, I mean, this is a, a outstanding offensive football team, an outstanding team. That's why they're uh, in this game. But uh, we're excited about playing them, and and uh, feel like that uh, again. We're we're going to see a heck of a team. Yeah, I mean, I, I look at their offensive line. We know about Whitworth, 6'7", 330 pounds, and we know about him as a person as well as a oh, yeah. as well as a, a monster. The right tackle, uh, uh, Havenstein, is uh, is what, 6'8", 330 pounds. I mean, they got a couple of monuments at the tackle position. Is that offensive line – are they a pass-first team? Coach, are they better pass protectors than run blockers? Are they pretty good both ways? I think they're pretty good both ways. You know, I think that they uh, – they t they – have a package that I think they believe in, both run and pass. And I, and I think they've been obviously pretty productive to be where they are right now in both areas, you know. And 
uh, shoot during the, the uh, playoffs. They've averaged about 28 points a game. They've, they've thrown it well. They've run it well. They're 50% on third down. I mean, they're playing, again, the best teams in the league. So that they've, uh, they're, they're a highly explosive, but also a, a very efficient offensive team. And uh, so it's going to tax our ability to execute on defense, run and pass all the way through the game. Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be a heck of a heck of a Super Bowl. How excited are you, Coach? I mean, you personally, you, you this is your first opportunity, you know, at at, at uh, Super Bowl uh, at something like this, and uh, you know, winning an AFC Championship has to be huge for you. Going to Super Bowl Fifty Six has to be even. I don't know what's bigger than huge. Uh, to talk about that a little bit. Well, it's it's incredible. You know, I I have to thank the good Lord. I mean, I just uh, uh, I, and I've told a lot of these guys. You know, this is. It's 25 years that, that, that you know you you work like crazy and compete to get to something like this. And I'm just feel so grateful to to have that chance. There's a whole bunch of players and coaches that are way better than me that never had this opportunity. And I'm thinking, wow, how you know how lucky and fortunate I am. I'm I'm particularly happy for this this organization for this team. I'm particularly happy for Mr. Brown and and all that he's put into this team and and to this organization and what he's done for that and for this city. And so for the Brown family, the Blackburn family, I mean, really, I couldn't be more happy. And then, you know, you, you think about the coaching staff two, two years ago, we're coaching the senior bowl. Now we're in the super bowl. I mean, and I think, wow. I mean, what a, what a, there's been many, many people in this building uh, and otherwise that have contributed to this thing. Again, like most things we do here, it's a we mentality. And so I'm happy for so many people that, are going to get this experience and and uh you know as we get closer but you know you just want to uh you you want to just do everything you possibly can in your power to help it uh reach a successful ending and, and that's what we're all trying to get done it, but it's been um it's been unbelievable really and i and to see our town and this city and and you know i was here in the, in 97 and 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 saw and some of the early years of, of well, that's even after you were playing, but my point to you, seeing what the Bengals were all about, I used to go when I was coaching over here at UC and in the late seventies, uh, go out to see you guys at, at training camp up in uh, Wilmington. And I just, I know, I know what this town and what, what the Bengals uh, have meant to this area and to see it get back to where it has been, where you guys had it and uh, get it back to that, I think has been very, very special. Yeah, you you, uh, you hit it right on the head, and, and really, when when Mike Brown went to that podium and, and accepted the Lamar Hunt Trophy as AFC champion at the age of 86 years old, and and it's a family operation, three three generations now, you know, Mike and his wife, and, and then his 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 kids and and his grandkids. It it's it's pretty amazing uh, for for a guy who is at every practice. He's like the post office: rain, snow, sleet, or hail. Mike Brown's there. And doesn't miss any of it. As a football guy, he doesn't have other businesses, and this football team's just a little hobby. I mean, this is his life, and uh, for him to be able to go up there and accept that trophy was big, wasn't it? Oh, it was phenomenal. I mean, I would be frank with you, I was kind of crying. I mean, I was just so happy for him uh, because I, I have some sense. I don't know everything, but I have some sense of all that he has done and all that he endures to to make this a championship organization and team and i pray to god that, that that he gets this world championship you know that this this happens because i don't i can't think of anybody that deserves it more than he does he and the family well you're on that you're not very far down that list yourself coach you've you've given a, a great life that you know a football life that's you know that show a football life mark duffner that you you are you are a football life you're 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 a football coach you're a ball coach and and on top of that you're an extraordinary human being, Coach. You've touched a lot of lives during uh, during your life in football in a very, very positive way, and uh, you're a special man. Well, Dave, as you are, I appreciate the kind words. Uh, I, uh, uh, you, you're what you do for uh, certainly the Bengals, but for football, you've been a tremendous advocate in collegiate football as a broadcaster. You've been an outstanding player, an outstanding part of this, the Cincinnati Bengals and this community. For so many years so again once again if anybody deserves kudos it's you and then some uh what you've done in uh, in a voluntary way too for so many people has been tremendous so the world's made up of givers and takers and you're it, when they look up the giver word they see dave lapham right next to that in the, in the dictionary so we appreciate all you do 
Appreciate you, Coach. Thanks for those kind words. And more importantly, uh, thanks for your time because I know it's crazy. You guys put, <laughs> put together a good one, Coach. We're, we're going to do, we're gonna do our best. Appreciate yeah. the opportunity to be with you. Who day? Who day? Same here. In two days, a couple of days, flying to L.A. Are you kidding me? Super Bowl 56, Coach. Yeah, yeah we're looking. Here we go. You're the best, okay. Coach. All right. Thank you. At First Star Logistics, we're a very strict company that really puts the pressure on our employees. Brakes? What are those? That's what I'm talking about, Icky. Get the body right, then the mind's right. You know, yeah. you know you gotta get that body right. That's right. right. Yes, sir. <laughs> Become a star with a chance to earn the highest commission percentages in the industry as a freight broker agent. Check out FirstStarLogistics.com.